Lawrenceville, above all, is about community. It's about belonging. Our house system, which dates back to the 19th century, was designed with the aspiration that each student should feel at home here. Our Harkness tables, which were introduced in the 1930s, create a democracy of voices around a table. The first lesson you learn when you walk into a classroom at Lawrenceville is about listening and respecting other individuals. You learn that everyone has a place at the table. Our athletic teams are measured not by win-loss records, but by the tight bonds of trust and support that are formed. Captains lead by example, and they demonstrate what it means to serve something larger than yourself. And you can distill these notions of house, harkness, and team down to their simplest form, which is respect. We offer a handshake and a smile at Lawrenceville. We do not walk by. We welcome. We don't exclude. We assume positive intentions and seek to trust. We are not fearful of differences. And above all, we support and encourage. We do not harass, denigrate, bully, or haze. This is a tough time to be an adolescent. Um, there are all kinds of worrisome statistics around depression and anxiety. Certainly, the whole landscape of social media and the internet, drugs and alcohol, and bullying and hazing. It's part of the world that these students have to navigate, and our job is to do our best to keep them safe. We start with certain things that are fundamentally important. Our teacher-student ratio is one to eight. We have small classrooms. We have 12, 14 students around a table. We have small dormitory units because part of the job of every teacher is to have a meaningful connection with every kid every day. And good teaching starts with a relationship. If something goes awry, we notice it. We're not perfect. Are there moments when we miss things? Of course we do. But we work very hard at it. We're very purposeful about it. We're not there just to pass on math facts. That's, that's the easy part, right? We're there to tend to intellectual development, of course, but emotional development, physical development. And what we do is fundamentally important. I mean, every year we graduate 200 or so students and send them out into the world with a sense of responsibility to work at making it a better place. And we equip them during their time at Lawrenceville with the tools, the confidence, and the wherewithal to contribute and make a difference. Lawrenceville is a challenging place, and there are all kinds of difficulties that arise. It's a high-performance, high-achieving kind of a, a highly academic kind of an environment. So in my first fall at the school, and I was still trying to really understand how things worked, we were, it was the night before our first exam period. And you wonder, are kids going to be hunkered down in their rooms, not sharing their notes, kind of separating themselves and working for their own you know, purposes, the student council organized a talent show. And what struck me was their impulse on this pressure-filled evening was not to shy away from each other, but to get together. And at one point, a freshman girl, second form we call them, a, second, a freshman girl gets up by herself, acoustic guitar. I thought, oh my goodness, this room of seniors and upperclassmen, how's this girl going to? Well, she belted out this song, just crushed it, and the place exploded and applause. Here's a young lady who after eight or nine weeks in the school knew already that she could get out in front of the entire school like that, perform, and be supported. So we take student leadership very seriously at Lawrenceville and when there are positions to be filled there is a very selective process. Students are carefully vetted for it and once they're chosen to be a prefect for the house system or a team captain there is a training process and a sense of responsibility that is passed on to them. So there was a circumstance not too long ago where a number of students, underclassmen, thought it would be funny to rate female peers in their class, like a, like a suitability to go to the prom with them. And a number of prefects got wind of it and intervened immediately and put an end to it. These students knew how to intervene and knew why to intervene, and that's part of their training. Well, historically, in a lot of schools, uh, certainly at Lawrenceville, if you um, if you believe the lore, uh, there certainly was 
hazing and mistreatment, um, bullying went on at times. There was a concerted effort a good 30 years ago by a very assertive and very effective dean of students uh, with the support of the headmaster to put an end to any of that kind of behavior. Our policy towards bullying and hazing is that we don't tolerate it at all. We, it's not part of who we are, it's not part of our culture, and we discipline students and send very, very clear messages about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in this school. In my mind, when you talk about secret societies, when you talk about exclusive clubs, anytime you have some kind of a special privileged group where there are certain criteria to belong, any kind of secret initiations, again, I fundamentally feel that that is incongruous with and inconsistent with who we are and what we do as a school. And when they have come up in the recent past, occasionally we've gone after it aggressively and put an end to it. If a student finds himself or herself a victim of bullying or hazing or any kind of serious disrespect, there are an array of resources. They're surrounded by options. And it starts with prefects in the houses who have a certain training for that. There are teachers in the classroom and these are teachers who have built a relationship with students. There are team captains, there are house masters, there are advisors. There are all manner of adults around them who are known to them. And then, of course, we have our Safe Schools anonymous reporting system, which students know about and use. They also see the degree to which the Dean of Students Office goes after quite proactively these instances of disrespect or bullying, and they are aware of the disciplinary outcomes that occur when these things happen. We spend a lot of time training our faculty and staff around bullying and hazing and, and adolescent well, well-being in general because it's all related. And we work with students to help them be self-advocates and we work with our faculty so that they understand how to spot differences in behavior. In the end, when you think about what is most important about a school it's really about giving an adolescent a safe space in which to develop, find their footing, find their confidence, and be ready to launch out into the world.